We could go with real simple, normal learning resources and learning activities. But if we can do better than simple, isn't that isn't that fun? Like, couldn't we bring some interactive elements into it, some animation, some clickable stuff? Wouldn't your students absolutely love that more than, you know, just your, your regular old static learning resources? Well, today in this video, we're going to be talking about how to make fun, interactive learning resources with Genially. And we've got the people that you want to hear about this. And I'm going to really struggle with this. I'm just going to say this right at the outset, because these two ladies down at the bottom that are going to be telling us about it go by the name Genially. So this is <laughs> Genially with Genially. I'm going to do my best, folks. I am because it's it's gonna it's gonna be rough. So um, my name's Matt Miller uh, from Ditch That Textbook alongside Holly Clark from the Infused Classroom. And um, we're gonna be talking all about this genially thing. You're gonna learn a lot, we're gonna learn a lot. Um, if you're watching this live, we're super excited to have you uh, here joining us and would love for you to pop over into the chat and tell us who you are and where you're from and what you do. Um, and so without further ado, let's hear from the two ladies down below me. So go ahead and take it away and tell us a little bit about yourselves. All right, well, thank you, Matt. We appreciate the opportunity to be here this morning. And um, we are so excited to share Gina Lee with you. Uh, we are absolutely loving it and it's so much fun. Um, my name is Jenny Long. And I'm Salee Clark. And, and we, we are, are Jenny Lee. Hey, <laughs> hey Holly. Yeah. Holly, there we go. No other way. There you go. That's right. Yes. Yeah. I'm like, there you got it. Got it. Middle, maybe. Yeah. Oh, so bad at this. Good job. Good job. It's taken us All a long right. time to figure out which can. So. Yeah. That's good. No, that's good. Um, Jenny and Salee, can you just tell us real quick a little bit about who specifically each of you are and what you do? Sure. Um, I'm Jenny Long, and I am an instructional technologist with Eagle Mountain Saginaw Independent School District, which is a little bit north of Fort Worth, Texas. So Slee and I work together. We're been this is our fourth year of working together. We're going on our fifth year. I can't remember, but uh, it feels like forever. We feel like we've been friends forever. But it was a match made in heaven, and um, we get to um, work in our district. We have over twenty one thousand students that we get to go in the classrooms and model lessons and teach and work with our teachers. And we just love our jobs. And um, we are also ed tech consultants, so we do a lot of training and uh, consulting as well. Excellent. Very good. Well, we've got a bunch of people joining us here. Again, if you're just joining us, please do jump in the chat and tell us who you are, where you're from, and what you do. And if you're watching this on the replay, you've got all sorts of good stuff coming up here. So we're going to do a real quick check-in with some Ooh. of the folks that are here. Lucy is here from oh, Poland. Nice. So now we're wow. officially outside of the United States, which is cool. Kathleen's here really? from Irving, Texas. Good to see you. Um, Myrna's here from Alabama. Texas is representing strong yeah, here. Let's go. Uh, info from Frisco, Texas. Good to see you. The E twins, e -twins are here. Yay. So we're all the way over in Spain too, which is cool. <laughs> so Emily says bonjour. Um, mm -hmm. So I'm going to assume that maybe that means she's from France or Canada or someplace, mm -hmm. or maybe not. I mean, anybody can speak French, right? Um, we've oh, got oh. someone else from Pola. This is Cassia or Cassia. Um, Conchi is here. And she's Conchi, excited yay. to be here. You know Conchi? Yeah, she's with you. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Oh, cool. That's cool. Very good. Very we good. Bring it. We better bring it. Yeah. <laughs> Ryan's here from Southern California. Emily from North Carolina. We've got Terry from Michigan. Dana is here from Romania. Good to see you. Um, we've got Ivy here from Arizona. Um, Lucy is a high school teacher, by the way. She just added that in. Susan Kenworthy from Fishers, Indiana, just down the road from me, only an hour and a half or so. I'm in the middle of nowhere. Nothing's really close mm -hmm. to me. But um, we've That's got Sarah's here from Dallas. That's right in your area, I yes, think. And then we've got Juan here from McFarland, California. And Conchi says, happy to help with any questions about Genially in the chat. Awesome. We've got extra people who know about it. Very good. So, well, I mean, all well, right. That's yeah. <laughs> good. Excellent. Well, it's good to see all of the folks that are checking in here, um, still checking in. So um, why don't we go ahead and dive right into this? Um, I have heard so much buzz about Genially, and I hope I'm saying it right. Um, 
And I'm I'm just curious to to learn more about it. So, ladies, if you want to take it away and just kind of tell us about it and some of your favorite features on it. And I just want to say I'm going to be playing along. So if any of you out there see me looking down, I'm not bored. I'm playing. So <laughs> we love that. Mm -hmm. We want yeah. everyone to play along. Yes. Yeah. So yeah. Now, absolutely. Matt, That's the only way you learn. Yeah. yeah. Matt, put up the address so other people have a chance to maybe get on, um, sign up really quick. There are different um, levels of what you get from certain payments, but we'll talk about that later. But right now we're just going to play. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah. Jenny and I started with a free version at TCE, TCEA last year. Actually, we, we heard the buzz as well. Then we went to a, um, a session on it and we were like, oh, Oh my goodness, we love this. Really, we love making beautiful things. And so we keep seeing these, you know, just very visually appealing. Oh, there's Sasha. Sorry. Very visually appealing um, graphics come out from Genially. So we were like, we need to figure this out and look at it. And um, so we dove in at TCEA. Uh, but it really came to light during this time of distance learning, how important it is. Lisa Highfield was on the show with us with Holly a few weeks ago. And one of the things that we were talking about is that information needs to be graphically appealing to students and to teachers. Like that's just something that um, for me to want to look at it and learn about it, I need to be drawn to it. And that's something that Genially really does well. Um, not only that, it's also easy to create within um, Genially, but they don't do just do graphics. They also have a gaming platform built right in where you mm. can create online games for your students. And it is super easy. They have breakouts, quizzes, wow. board games, or digital board games. They are beautiful and easy to make. So uh, nice. is there any cool. other things that you want to share about That's, it? No, I'm, I'm excited to just see it. So right. um, Lee, I think you're sharing your screen, right? So maybe we can just jump right over there and start taking a look at it. So can you tell us, just kind of walk us through some of your um, your favorite features and some of the things we might use in the classroom? We fell in love with this template, of course, because of the unicorns and <laughs> very Microsoft feeling to us with the, the unicorn and everything. So we were like, oh, we have to use this one, it's perfect. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We did. And we created it as um, an advertisement for us to share tips. And so, um, you know, the front of it's just cute and pretty. And it obviously says start. So it engages you. And then it automatically built into the template are all of these motions. So all I had to do was add my content. Um, these are all ready to go pieces that are built in. Whoa. Yeah, all of I did add our faces on top of <laughs> these two people. <laughs> nice. And then I added a video. Um, and so this took some little extra work. But everything else was very simple. Just you just simply click and add. So I kind of want to show you guys how to get started. Does that sound good? Yes, come see. Oh, totally. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that's mm -hmm. one example. Well, maybe I should show you a few more examples. Then I'll show you how to edit. Yeah. Um, this That was one example. We also have... Um, let me see if I can find a game in here. Yeah, as you're loading this up, the one that you just showed us felt an awful lot like slides, like PowerPoint. And um, is that is that just one of the ways that you can use it, or are there multiple ways? Or mm -hmm. that's just one of the ways you can use it. Uh, so you can create uh, presentations like we did there with that one, or you can create like games or quizzes like this one. So if you go to preview here. Uh, this we made for an industrial revolution uh, activity we did with OneNote uh, because here's a little, little tip. It embeds beautifully into OneNote. So all you have to do is take the link um, put it into OneNote and all of this embeds right there into it. So, so pretty. Um, you click start and here's the question and here are the answer options. And let's see if I got it right. Woohoo, I did. And so Yay. then you click to go to the next one. And I don't remember the answers for real. But <laughs> uh, I'm I'm right. I really don't mean to. <laughs> I'm trying to miss one. <laughs> Let's try 45, maybe again. Yay. Okay. So I got it incorrect. And so I have to go all the way back to the beginning. And so then it's going to start over again. Uh, okay. So it's just a really pretty way of creating quizzes. Um, let's see here. We have more too. Let me oh, show you. I have a question. Yeah. So on top of that quiz, is there a spot 
and maybe it's coming, where kids could, who when they um, answer something, could also record their thinking. Like, do is there a way to embed audio? There's a way for you to embed audio. I don't know if you could, you could probably insert a Flipgrid link where students could click and then go record. I don't know that Genially has a spot where they could engage that way back with the content. Okay. That yeah. Be a question that's a good content. question. Yeah, that's a question for Gucci. <laughs> <laughs> um, and one let's thing, uh, Celine, let me yeah. add to when you are signed, when you first log on, you can join with your Microsoft or your, um, a, a Google account. So either one, if you have an Office 365 or Google, you can just quickly sign in that way. So it's super easy to get started with the, even just the free. Okay. Um, real quick, before we move on, we had a quick question come in from Facebook. Amy asked, are teachers able to gather data from what students do during the game or after a quiz? Or is that one of those where it's kind of like self-directed, just gives you a chance to practice? I believe it's more self-directed and just gives you a chance to practice. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's, yeah, we use that kind of like pre-assessment, so to speak. And then if we want to assess what students know, then we maybe use another tool for that. Could be really good for um, getting kids excited or curious about a subject too, rather than like it being right or wrong, but like asking something about the 1960s before you read The Outsiders. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. that's cool. P.S. Conchi to the rescue here. Uh, she says it's yes. a pretty new functionality, but yes, you can record your audio. She says, Yay. Awesome. and then she does say you can also embed your flip grids. You can do both. So great, awesome. Wow. Thank you, Conchi. <laughs> yes. Awesome, very good. Um, so here's some of the gaming platform. Um, let's see if I can get to some of the games here. Yeah, so here's all the different templates ready to go for you to choose from to create a game or, or a quiz for your students. Um, they're really cute and fun and engaging. Um, and then they also have like board game, board game templates for you as well. We use this one here for one of ours. Um, but you can see it automatically has dice that spin and roll for you. And then you click it and then you know you need to move your man five spaces. And then to create it, you just go use this template. And... Um, it says surprise, but on it, it lets you insert pieces there for the students to go and learn or answer questions or do different things. Mm -hmm. Wow. That's really cool. So is, is this particular template and, and it, I'll, I'll just ask this maybe more generally instead of this particular one, but there are some templates that are free and there are some templates that are premium, right? That mm -hmm. is right. We do have the premium package. In mm -hmm. fact, before we became ambassadors, we loved it so much. We went and bought it for ourselves Yeah, uh, because we loved it. And we were like, we don't care. We're paying it. And Jenny, do you remember how much it was? I think and we had a code from TCEA, if I, if I remember correctly, from one of the sessions. They gave out like a code. And so I thought it was like $60 or something for the year, um, mm -hmm. somewhere around there with the code. So, I mean, it's not, it wasn't outrageous. And that gave us um, you know, all access to all of the, you know, premium features and everything. So there is, there are like, I think four different levels that you can do the different classroom um, packages. And then at the master level, you can brand it yourself and, you know, you can do all of that too. But Slee did mention the ambassador. So we are part of the ambassador program. It is fairly new as well. So that's an amazing opportunity to get involved with um, other Genially experts and there's webinars and trainings and just so many resources available uh, so definitely, um, you know, we can put some information out there about that as well. Yeah, because yeah. how I just involved. I did just load this up. This is um, this is the pricing. So you've got free. And so the free plan, you have unlimited creations and views, and you can use the free templates. And then if you want to go to pro, then it looks like it's 750 US dollars a month build yearly. So, you know, that would be what, $90, I think, um, mm -hmm. for the entire year, unless you get a code or unless you're mm -hmm. an ambassador, of course. And then, of course, we like to look at the education button right here. Mm -hmm. Um, you've got students and then you've got edu pro which is five bucks which like you were saying translates to sixty dollars yearly mm -hmm. so um, i think that's the one we did yeah but i mean mm -hmm. to get started it looks like the free version could totally you know get you going oh, okay. right? absolutely yes uh we yeah. created a lot within the free version they even have uh breakouts and they had one breakout template that we also used in the free version as well um, we just wanted more. So we were like, we must buy it. We have to have this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, okay, cool. So we've seen some presentations. We've seen some um, 
some game examples and are there any other, you know, types of creations that you can, that you can create that you all like? Yeah. Um, I think even just as a presentation platform too, I think it's an amazing way for students to try something different. You know, we have so many different tools that they can use to do presentations and even teachers, you know, to present their information in a different way. So we've um, created a few different presentations as well. So again, maybe just kind of go through some of those steps. Lee, you think just, yeah. yeah, I love this dashboard too. That shows you really good. This yeah. kind of shows you all the different pieces that you can create. Um, and all of them come with pre-made templates ready to go. And I think I have made from a template every single time. Um, like I said, they're super easy to insert your content into it. And um, they just flow beautifully um, as you create. So. Wow. I'm a big fan of making horizontal infographics on my own anyway. I can only imagine what those would look like if I infuse them with some genially. That would be pretty cool. Uh, well, let's see yeah, what they have. Good. They have all of these different templates for you to choose from. Oh, Matt's going to go. He's going to go crazy now. Look oh, at this. I know. <laughs> there, goes, there goes the rest of my day. <laughs> Now, um, a lot of these look like they are education focused templates, maybe. Am I right in seeing that? Um, I would say yes. Um, I mean, anything could be adapted to, to education oh, yeah. for the most part, mm -hmm, you know. Mm -hmm, so. mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Ms. Lee, will you pick one and show kind of how we can You got it. One? Sure. Uh, let's find one that kind of flows across. Something like well, this might be different than a presentation because a presentation actually kind of looks like a PowerPoint or slides where it has different cards for you to kind of work on too. So this one will be laid out a little bit different. Mm -hmm. All right. So I'm going to use this template. That kind of looks like a matte template with the black. I know it and does. It also there. kind yeah. of looks like a hyperdoc in a way too. You mm -hmm. can easily replace these with um, your hyperdoc things as well. Mm -hmm. um, so when I click on an First, let's see what all it does. So if I go to view, I can see, oh, let me save it. I can kind of see what it does. And if you click the button up here at the top, you can see the interactive images. So it'll show you which pieces actually allow you to interact with the graphic. Mm -hmm. So I can click here and you see Ooh. this is what it went to. That was really pretty. And then you click the back arrow and go back and then you can go to the next one. I like that. Right. That's cool. Those are really fancy. Mm -hmm. So to get started, I can click here and the finger with the little arrow thing over it, I can click and it shows you where it goes in your slides. And so you can just, you know, decide which slide you want it to go to and you can change the contents on that slide. So that one goes to contents. So I'm going to go over here to on the left, scroll down and find contents right here. And now I can come in here and edit this to say what I want it to say. Um, like, buy the tech like a pirate book. I didn't like even that. put her up to saying that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And so then now whenever I go back to my home screen here um, and I preview it, Let's go look and see what it does. I click here and, oh, it didn't change. Maybe because I didn't save it yet. <laughs> Maybe I should do that. I did do it, right? Contents. So let's go back and check it, make sure. Click here, click my little finger here, and there it is. Contents and save. There we so go. Maybe I didn't really do it. That's a good chance. Ta da! Now it works. Yay. Oh, you're now working. Nice. Yay. Very good. And then to change the action, that is what this little blob flying through the air is, is your action button. So here you can see what happens on entrance, continuous, hover, or exit. And then these are all the different directions you can choose for it to go and for it to do. Mm -hmm. um, so okay. if you add more to it, you can match um, the yeah. action that can be assigned. Okay. So, so with this, we can see that we can click on things and then go off to other slides, so to speak. So it's almost like linking between slides in a PowerPoint or something Absolutely. like that, which yes. is, which is cool. Um, mm -hmm. I think I've seen some other features in it that, that we might potentially want to use, like, 
for instance, are there like little animations and like clickable things and tell, yeah, tell us some of the other features that we can use on these. You got it. So um, over here on the left hand side, you can see all of the other features you can add into a Genially. So you can add text and here it gives you some options for adding text mm -hmm. and layouts, which we like. Um, you can add images. Now, this is what's really cool about images. You That's can add the best. Yeah, <laughs> you can <laughs> actually add them from your computer, which we love, of course, because we like creating our own. But you can also insert from a URL. There's transparent background images, mm -hmm. which I'm a huge fan of. Uh, Jenny knows <laughs> my <laughs> love of transparent backgrounds. Uh, you can mm -hmm. also go to Pixabay, which I think is huge and so nice to have something built oh, in. Yeah. You can just search for images and you don't have to worry about like trying to find a graphic that you can use. They also mm -hmm. have, of course, GIFs built right in. Uh, and then you can also build up your brand as well. Nice. Under resources, here are all the pieces you will like, Matt, because there's a million icons for you to Ooh, choose from. Ooh, I like yeah. that. Whoa, look at those. Love it. There's a ton. I like that for sketch noting for kids. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like they can make their own sketch notes. That's a great idea. Mm -hmm. um, there's graphs and charts, um, and you can actually enter in the contents on that. I came up today and told me that. So I was like, ooh, that's cool. They also have some fun Genially illustrations, and these are really cute as well. So they're great to use in infographics, scenes, maps, and then yeah. even silhouettes. Sweet. I know. Then you have great. interactive elements. I know so many pieces. Then you have interactive elements that you can also drag over and you can link um, any of these buttons with any of any content that you want from um, Facebook, from uh, YouTube. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, tons of different options for you to. Uh, and I've got, I've go ahead, Holly. Uh, I'm so sorry, Matt. So I, I want to make sure that I'm understanding this. So if I'm a student, I come to the Genially account just like this, and I can create an artifact of learning using all of this. And how do I turn it into my teacher? Is the final thing a link? Um, does it share to Teams or Classroom? What's happening there? Mm -hmm. It is a link. And so you get to choose. You can go public or private. Although I do have a confession. I have not used it with a student. So I'm not real sure what the student dashboard looks like on their side. So I don't know if it shares to, you know, if it has those options. I know on my side, it gives me a public link or it gives me a private link to share. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. Excellent. I bet Conchi can answer that. <laughs> yeah, there you go. That's right. I'll keep an eye out for the comment. Watch her, yeah. She's, she's been on it. Yeah, absolutely. So um, we're kind of getting a feel for, for what this looks like, um, that we can do these presentations, we can do graphics, uh, we can do games, and then you can pull any of that stuff over from the side and stick it in there. And so the, the possibilities are sound like they're, they're really pretty limitless. And... Um, I thought maybe we could take a little bit of time. And by the way, if you're watching this live, we would love to have you throw ideas in when it comes to this too. But I thought maybe we could take some time to kind of brainstorm how this could be used in the classroom setting, whether we're face-to-face -face doing blended learning or if we're doing remote or completely online. Um, you know, what are, what are some of the things that, that we can do? And so, um, Janie and Salih, if, uh, you know, if you have any thoughts, let's, let's go ahead and start this uh, brainstorming session. With well, everyone we're on the side too. Yes, we're actually right now making a choice board in Genially for our upcoming session at TCA for TOTS, our elementary mm. technology conference. Um, and so we're making a choice board out of it, which we love that. But one of the things we learned from Lisa and Holly was that in our explore section and in our choice board section, it'd be great to embed um, Flipgrid or some way to get a formative assessment back from the kids. And so I love the idea of embedding a Flipgrid in where I can then find out what the kids learned at the end of their time of exploring. Mm -hmm. um, so I think Genially would be a good option for that. Yeah, definitely. No, that's cool. Um, I could also, I think I could also potentially see us using it for, um, you know, almost like a choose your own path type of story situation. Um, I, I could also see, you know, I, and I've done this with um, slide presentations before, you know, like, for instance, within PowerPoint, you can link between slides. And so I could see where you could start off talking about a story. So let's mm -hmm. say, for instance, in class, 
we're really lucky and our teacher is really awesome. And we're reading Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. <laughs> yeah. And I so we start, that. we start at the beginning here and um, we kind of work our way through the story and we talk about one part of the story and then we give the reader two choices. And one of the choices is you can either go to the thing that actually happened in the story yeah. or you can cook up a whole different possibility of what happens if the characters had taken a different choice. Mm -hmm. And I so if we, if we do the one that actually happened, then it links to another page in that presentation where we continue on through the story. But if mm -hmm. you choose the new one, then it kind of ends it with one slide and it says, here's what would happen to Harry's life if this had happened instead. Game over. And then you start over at the beginning. And then that way you can kind of explore, you know, it's kind of a... a it's kind of a deeper thinking thing where you put yourself in the shoes of the character and you start to think, where could this potentially have gone if they had taken different, different choices? And that gives them the opportunity to kind of own the story and take it into their own hands, I guess. That's one way that I, I, that. I could potentially use, use that, I think. I love that. When I was a child, I remember Choose Your Own Adventures were my favorite, favorite oh, type of books to read. Yeah. Like, oh, those are so fun. Those oh, man. Awesome. I think I checked all of them out of the school library at some point. Slee, <laughs> so, you like, you're too young. I don't think you even remember <laughs> Choose Your Own Adventures. I remember <laughs> I was a librarian and we actually, oh. they were a big hit. And so we bought a lot of them to share with our kids. Mm -hmm. so, they're yeah. awesome. Yeah, let's start throwing um, some of the, oh, here comes Conchi again. You can share Yay. directly to Teams in Google Classroom. <laughs> I'm having fun. You're doing a fantastic Yay. job. <laughs> Yay. Awesome. Uh, we have had some some ideas come in through the comments as well. The E-Twins from Spain are saying we use it for presentations, graphics, escape rooms, yes. gamification, trainings for teachers, lots of different things. Mm -hmm. um, Emily says infographics are great in the world language classroom. Yes, totally agree from the Spanish teacher here. I, I can totally see that. What a user-friendly way to engage novices in the target language. We have the E-Twins again saying we love to use it for PDs, you know, for like teacher training and built-in resources that attendees can check later when we share mm -hmm. the presentation link with them. That's a really mm -hmm. good idea. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then we, we have one more from Amy. Ideas on how to use, how to maybe use for word study. We use words their way and kids and teachers get bored. So maybe this mm -hmm. would get their interest. That definitely. that makes sense to you all? <laughs> yes. I love that. Yeah. Yeah. And definitely. I know that Sasha said it earlier. She um, had a message come across about timelines. She said she loves the timeline uh, template. So even using it for timelines and having students create those timelines is another great way. That's great. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So I am, of course, emailed during while we were doing this to Conchi because I wanted to know more about the record feature because that's my leg thing. Mm -hmm. and she says you can go um, in the editor, you click the insert button, then you click the audio tab, and then there's a speaker. So all I'm thinking right now is things like a hyperdoc around a book bento, and we've talked about that in another um in another session, Matt, where kids put together five things that go with a book that really describes a book, and they could do that really cool and have them come in and genially, mm -hmm. and then press record and tell me why you chose these things, and then turn it into me and Teams or or, or Google Classroom. So uh, anytime I can get that embed of um, understanding what they're thinking, yeah. I'm in. So if you can do that with genially, then we are good to go. Yeah, <laughs> yeah definitely. And I've got to think that this is this has got to be such a nice thing for remote learning because again, it's not just let's give them a document with a bunch of information on it. Let's yeah. just have them read this thing out on the web. I mean, this is clickable, it's interactive, it's well designed. I've got to think, you know, if I'm a kid and I get something like that from a teacher, that's got to be cool. But then the ability mm -hmm. to actually make it myself, I think, would be really cool too, mm -hmm. right? Totally agree. And Selena and I can attest to that. We have, you know, middle school and high school students ourselves. And when we were getting, you know, just a long list of texts, it was like, man, if this could just be presented yeah. in a different way, I just think you're going to get those that engagement from those students so much more. So, yeah, what I like, um, oh, sorry about this is um, 
Gina Lee seems to me a little bit more digital fluency because kids are getting those skills they need to really create dynamic graphics that, uh, that you can do it in slides and Matt does an amazing job, but it's still, you have to have the critical thinking to even know to go to noun project to find those things and bring them in. Here, they're right here, but um, because you can take out that part of it, then they can go to town and start doing things and create these graphics that they'll need in their job as they grow up because mm -hmm. our society is uh, about advertising via social media and graphics. So really important skills for kids to learn. Mm -hmm. And I love that it offers the templates. Like Salee likes to create from scratch a lot and I like yeah. the templates. So I think that it's nice that it offers, it offers both. Um, but they're just beautiful. Templates. But their templates are so good. Like there's no need for me to create from scratch. Like I use their templates all the way because I'm like, they are just so good. But on that same point mm -hmm. that Holly was talking about, I could definitely see a beautiful student portfolios being made in yeah. this. Where students have the ability to take their content, select what's best and then insert it into a beautiful platform. But not yeah. without explaining it. <laughs> Please, you know, you guys already know, you already like, here comes Holly with the press record. <laughs> but, um, but like taking it into Genially and then screencasting it some way so that they explain their thinking around mm -hmm. that final portfolio. Yep. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah. We did get a quick question from Terry. She said, would this work with Canvas? And I think since um, Genially is based on mm -hmm. links, you know, giving students links back to the website and embedding and all of that, I think that would definitely work with a learning management system like Canvas. And I'm seeing you guys shaking yeah. your heads. So, yes. Yeah. I think if you just do a link turn in, then you would be mm -hmm. fine. And then the students can just copy their links and turn it in. Yep. Yeah. Absolutely. A um, couple of more comments coming in. Jamie says, great for grade level planning with the collaboration feature. We haven't even talked about the collaboration feature. I know. No, we have not. Yeah. Let's talk about that. Yeah. So does that, does that basically mean that multiple people can work on uh, the same genially project? And then, um, I mean, I guess if, if that's the case, just like Jamie said, you know, that could be the, the place where you house all of your ideas, oh, yeah. you know, almost like a shared Word document or Google Doc or something like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You can share your genealies with other people too, and they can use them or add to them and edit them as well. So that's a really nice feature. So we were working with, uh, before we left school in March, we were supposed to come back from spring break and do a um, breakout with um, a third grade class in one of our elementary schools. And so we created it. I shared it with the teacher. She was ready to go and sharing it with her class. And we were going to come in and help support. Uh, but the sharing feature was really nice and easy to use uh, yeah. back and forth. Yeah, that's cool. Um, we got another comment from the E-Twins again. They said, you, you, can, um, you also have an interactive schedule template where you can include all the activities of the week and share the link with your students. Very useful for remote learning. That's, that's a great idea. idea. I love that. Yeah, yeah that's really good. Um, Rosalina asks, would you recommend this for all grade levels K-12? Well, so I have a question about that. Does that mean sharing your Gina Lee with K-12 or them making their own? It's a good um, question. Uh, and are kind me, of two different questions. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And for me, I think that um, making them and sharing them out at any grade level seems appropriate. I think a kid could mm -hmm. figure that out. Plus, if you put it into like Teams and have um, immersive reader, you have no issues around the reading of it for the little guys. Um, I work yeah. a lot with kindergartners. I'm not sure they could make their own. That would be a stretch. But man, do they surprise you. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. <laughs> Well, if you taught them how to use the audio true, feature, yeah. and yeah. you use the template that was already made, like, or even yeah. if you, you as the teacher made it, and then the they went template, in and just yeah. recorded audio, I could see that being an option. Yeah, it's it almost sounds as if if the kids were really motivated to do it, and the teacher was really motivated to do it. It sounds like it could it could possibly work, right? Mm -hmm. And I did go dig into yeah. the templates while you were talking. And like they had a molecules one and a history one and some really great ones that can get kids started um, without having to think about the template itself. So that's very nice. I liked that a lot. And they're, they're adding, adding new ones. ones. Oh. 
Go ahead, Jenny. <laughs> They're adding new ones all the time. So it's just even since we've been using it, you know, just new stuff all the time. So that's great. Just knowing it's a growing platform and it's constantly changing and improving. Well, I think for cool. summer learning, like if you're looking for a few things to like kind of learn more about, this seems like an um, a, a one to kind of investigate for sure. Um, do we yeah. know, are there webinars? Does Gina Lee put on webinars and have find people like yourself doing them? There was actually just one with, um, with did Lydia or Tisha, one of them did it with Wakelet and Gina Lee um, last week. So um, yeah. I think that they uh, are, you know, we can find that schedule too and definitely share that out um, because yes, they, they do have them. And speaking of Wakelet, I think it's a really great opportunity to talk about Wakelet's Community Week coming up next week. Yes. If you haven't heard about that, you can go to the Wakelet um, both website and their um, Twitter handle, and you can find out more about that because I believe all four of us will be presenting at that, if I'm correct. And yes. so um, quite a fun week to learn more about Wakelet, which should become one of your go-to tools. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, it. so as we, as we kind of wrap up here, I wanted to put this up real quick. If you want to get more of these two ladies down below me this way and <laughs> there, um, this is probably a good place to go, right? It's to go to the Oh yeah. Perfect. Yes. And our websites actually had been a little reno action this weekend. So Lee has been working really, really hard on updating our website. So when you see that, something's it's not working. I'm, I'm still working on it. <laughs> okay. Okay. No, that's cool. We'll be patient then. We'll be patient. <laughs> no, it looks great. It no. looks great. Excellent. And so again, we've been talking about Genially, which you can find right here. Genial.ly is a good place to find that. And there's a lot that you can do with the free version, even if you decide not to do the paid one. So um, real quick, as we wrap up, any last words from anyone? Well, just go try it. Give it a try. Get in there, play around. I think that you'll fall in love. And I love what made me think too, Holly, when you were talking about Wakelet, we have wakelets of our genealys too. So you can you oh. know, start making collections of your genealys, like our our um, <laughs> our uh, tech tip Tuesdays and our wakelet, or um, I forget the name of them all, but we have these sets of uh, genealys that we put into a wakelet collection. So I just love how they all work together and all these platforms are beautiful yeah. and fun and engaging. So definitely go try it. If you've never been in genealy, challenge you today to go make one and share it out. And one quick thing I, I played with uh, last night, the Gina Lee, um, so in Microsoft Teams, in the tab, they have the option of adding a website. And I just added the link to my Gina Lee, and it, it was there for kids to go through if I wanted that. So, like, I loved awesome. that feature. We love that. Mm -hmm. Excellent. All right. Very good. Well, um, that that just about wraps us up here. If you haven't gone and played with Gina Lee yet, what are you waiting for? Why yeah. don't you on this let's get going so um lots of lots of cool things that we can do with that if you've enjoyed this video and you would like to get more live videos like this please do subscribe to the ditch that textbook youtube channel if you're on youtube right now just click that little subscribe button and you see the little bell that shows up on there make sure you click that so you don't get or so that you do get <laughs> notifications <laughs> of any other future live videos um my uh YouTube, uh, my YouTube page, no, no, my Facebook page for Ditch That Textbook is where you can also be watching this as well as the Infused Classroom if you want to catch up on Holly's stuff. Um, uh, Jenny and Salee, do you want to do any quick shout outs to any place where they can find you? Uh, you can find us on Facebook as well. The Jenna Lee Show um, is on Facebook. We're also on Twitter at Jenna Lee One. Uh, so you can find us there on Twitter as well. And uh, the generally show.com. So we have a YouTube show and also a blog. So um, we are trying, we're out there in Instagram. Um, pretty much you can find us anywhere. <laughs> we would love to connect with you and answer any questions. You might have as well. Do All I know? Right. I've been practicing. <laughs> oh, I no, I watched the video last night and I was like, going to call you sleep, but it was late. I'm like, we are doing some TikToks. We're going to do it. <laughs> there you go. Awesome. All right. I'm ready. <laughs>
this was Thank fun. Thank you so much. We appreciate yeah, you having us. Yeah, time. absolutely. And thanks so much for joining us and for watching this. And we will catch you on the next video. Thanks.